Hello everyone and welcome back to For Science and Kerbal Space Program 2 Early Access. In this video we are going to try this once again, but I'm going to try a steeper entry into EVE's atmosphere and see how that goes in order to inform other design changes. We will probably let the landing gear explode and just try to land on the engine bells and yeah, that might be the best way to go. I mentioned in the previous video that one option would be to layer the heat shields. That is another option, but I'd rather not do that. Um, there is a way to get through an atmosphere steeply, quickly, in order to avoid a blader loss, but bits sticking out like the landing gear are problematic in that situation. Hopefully our air brakes are good enough as far as heat tolerance is concerned with the 1800 Kelvin that they're not going to be at risk, but we'll see. And I gathered from the comments that there is a misunderstanding of what's going on here. I'm trying things out. This is an experiment. And so uh, every little incremental difference is to try exactly what works and what doesn't. Science isn't about already knowing the answer. So uh, it is enjoyable to me to figure out what may or may not work and not necessarily having the answer already and it seems like people don't understand that we're just doing a bunch of experiments we focus on one change at a time kind of thing uh, to make sure that we isolate what benefits and what doesn't benefit the situation instead of throwing everything on at once uh, in order to see what happens also another sort of misunderstanding is that uh, we don't really have the capability to come back directly to Kerbin with this. There is no heat shield on the upper portion. <laughs> all right, In the nose cone, there's just another small crew cabin, the antenna and all that. Uh, this isn't coming directly back to Kerbin. Uh, the crew is going to have to get out and get into another vessel. Now, because of that, I, I might be wrong about my reading of the contract as far as that's concerned. Let me try and get the nose cone closed again. It is my understanding... Somebody had said that, oh, well, you shouldn't have the fuel to return to curb and go all the way down to the surface, and we're not. We're just going to send another vessel later to pick them up. Uh, but let's just take a look at what the contract actually says, and maybe I misunderstood it. So what it says here is land on EVE with vessel with 10 Kerbals and return to Kerbin. Uh, it's not clear to me whether it's the same vessel that needs to return to Kerbin. If it is, we might need to make some changes. I probably should at least slap on a docking port somewhere to refuel it if we need to do that. But um, it's just not going to be able to come back through Kerbin's atmosphere, I don't think. Uh, because we're dumping the heat shield. We're going to have an upper stage left over. And that's probably not got the heat shielding to survive. So, but my guess is that we just need to get the 10 Kerbals back, not get the same vessel back. But I'm not sure. But that's just something else we're going to test. We're going to see which reading of that contract is the correct one. So anyway, that being the case, let us uh, retro burn. And this time I'm going to go for uh, 50 kilometers. Let's try that. And again, we're just trying one thing at a time so that we get a full range of possibilities and a good understanding of how Eve's atmosphere interacts with each, with each of them. And there are plenty of other options that we could add. I could have made the upper stage hydro, uh, hydrogen and use a nerve or, well, more likely a swerve. And I've thought of that and yeah. But we'll try this. Well, 49 kilometers. I don't want... Uh, somebody suggested slapping more boosters. The goal is to do this with as little as possible. Uh, so we're seeing if we need more boosters, we need more boosters. But the goal is not to get it right the first time in this case. The goal is to experiment and see what works and what doesn't so that we can get an optimal system for it. Uh, as tight a system for it as we can without overloading of extra stuff. And maybe I already have extra stuff. Maybe I've got too much delta V in the lander portion. We'll see. If we can lighten that up, that makes capture easier. 
Oh, well, here in the dark, I'm gonna get rid of the stage. Um, okay, everything blew up again. <laughs> well, that happens sometimes. Okay, let, let me try that again. Okay, let me just F5 and F9 after doing this retro burn here. So, we we're expecting extra explosions, we just don't want them to be too many. The key supposition here is that if we spend less time in the heat, we'll ablate less. Well, I mean, or we'll keep within the limits that we have. So, that is the goal. If the landing gear blows up, maybe we should just have little heat shields below them or something like that. Just for them. If we need landing gear at all. There are other problems that we face. For instance, we might be landing in water. It's a little bit hard to tell where the oceans are, but this seems like a really big ocean to me. And we're going past land here. I don't know, there might be land over there, I see a coastline. But yeah. The knowledge that there are in fact oceans on EVE uh, sends chills down my spine because that might not be so easy to deal with. We'll see. I don't know what the properties of the oceans of EVE are, but I recall them not being very safe. There's something right there. Isn't there? There's a thing there. It's sort of fading now as it's in different light. Maybe it was just some rock formation that is especially prominent and catches sunlight. Okay. 64 kilometers. That's how the ablation is going. 60. I'm starting to get overheating indicators on... Um, I think that is air brakes. Okay, so 55-ish. Okay, so we can't do that deal. But we can certainly go lower than we did before. CN375. Oh, it's the nose cones. Hmm. Well, yeah, I can see how that's a problem. Maybe we should just carry smaller nose cones with higher heat tolerance. Let me just check the nose cone heat tolerance. It was 1000, I think it was. Let me just take a look at the VAB. But, I mean, that probably caused us to start tilting, I guess. They're not very heavy. Well, these large nose cones have 1600 Kelvin heat tolerance. They weigh 1.3 tons. This is lighter, 0.3 tons, but only 1,000 Kelvin. So maybe we will need to make a replacement. We'll think about that. But anyway, let's go back to the mission and see. Well, unfortunately, I can't go direct through the VAB and see what we can do. Can we come down in few enough passes that we can work with the heat shields that we've got. That's the question I've got right now. Can we just manage it in few enough passes so that our heat shielding right now is enough? The hypothesis might be no, but we should check. I'm gonna try 59 to 60. As opposed to the 50 we set before, actually 49. We're starting at about an apoapsis of 7,000 kilometers. It's tough to say what periapsis speed we're starting out at, because we're still accelerating down to periapsis. Oh, well, that's our ablation. Oh, we're going away from retrograde. That's new. Uh, we didn't have that problem. Oh, so that's what's happening. Uh, I guess we tilted away from retrograde before a little bit earlier than I thought. Okay. Alright. 
So it's losing aerodynamic grip is what's happening. That's why those the nose cone stuff goes. Okay, I missed that. Uh, trying 62 here. Yeah, it'll be okay through this periapsis. The way it gets thrown off seems pretty sudden. But that's how it happens, so not surprising. We've used five tons of ablator. Now, somebody in the comments did say that the drogue shoots might be powerful in this situation. I don't know if they would survive. I, they shouldn't. I mean, the drogue shoots shouldn't survive. And of course, in the VAB, they have the same max speed as the regular shoots, so it's a baffling thing, their stats. I don't understand their stats at all. But we, we may see about that. We don't have drogue shoots on here, we only have main shoots. And we should have them lower, but I'm not... I'm not seriously expecting this to make it to the ground. I'm just getting a little bit more information here. I do think that it'll explode, but I want to see how close we get to getting to the ground. Another interesting thing is the fact that things tend to start overheating more when you're in time warp. See, we start getting these overheating indicators just in 2x time warp. We probably can only do one more pass. Ideally, what we want is to get to a point where we're not going to go back all the way back out again, of course. If we get low enough, and it seems to be the case that the issue is the center of mass versus center of pressure thing. So if we could pull the center of pressure further this away, we'd stay stable for longer. And if we stay stable for longer, we can go deeper into the atmosphere and have fewer passes. Or maybe other things will explode. This was the same altitude as the first pass. So for some reason, we got extra heating on this pass that we didn't on the first pass. That might be because we're spending more time in the atmosphere. Once we're lower, we spend more time in the atmosphere. So let me think about this and see what I'll try next. For the sake of time, uh, I mean... I really want to launch it because I want to know how much Delta V will actually arrive at uh, of the real thing. But maybe I'll, because people recommended it, I'll cheat it. I don't like cheating things into or even for testing uh, during a career-ish save, which is what this is. But it will take a long time to launch it again. Still, I mean, there is the question of if I add parts to it, you know, obviously the Delta V that we arrive at arrive with will go down and we'll probably need more boosters or something like that so ultimately I'll need to know that but anyway let me think about this result and see what I believe we should come up with okay so I've got here the portion of the EVE mission that actually arrives at EVE because we will try to cheat it into orbit around EVE but we'll try to set it to the right altitude where we leave off uh, but potentially, because of the stuff we're adding, we might not actually get to that altitude. We'll see. Anyway, I'm taking off these nose cones that seem problematic, regardless of whether we're tilting or not. They seem to want to explode. So uh, we'll have more heat-tolerant things, even if they are heavier. But let me see. Maybe structural ones and then having those drogue shoots would be a good idea. So uh, this is a structural one, but has lower heat tolerance. That sucks. I mean, 850 compared to 1,000, so we don't really want to use that. It's a structural conical adapter. It should have better heat tolerance than the cargo bay, one would hope, but apparently not. 
I'm gonna try putting these nose cones here. I figure this is still going to be fairly well protected as long as we don't tilt away. And we're going to put some drogue shoots on here. Again, it doesn't seem like they should work out for us, but somebody said maybe they would. Well, we might as well check it out. The thing is, uh, their max safe velocity, as it says there, is identical to the max safe velocity of the regular shoots. So, and the total dynamic pressure that we're experiencing when we're in Eve's atmosphere is really, really high. But, you know, whatever, we'll try it. Uh, so these are drug shoots. These would go on top. Those would be nice. But it's not like they say that they have a great deal more deployed drag than this one. So, fine, we'll just use this one. Oh, now it's doing 6x6. Six six. Will it actually do that and mean it? <laughs> They're fairly light compared to the whole structure. So we'll see when we can use those, whether these work out better for us, whether we need two layers of heat shields. The Oddly enough, these landing gear didn't seem to be the things that were blowing up, so... Unless I missed one. So even though one seemed to be overheating before, that wasn't our issue this time. Okay, well, this will be my first use of the cheat menu in KSP2, believe it or not. Let me clean up the pads and select that. I've cleaned up the previous mission as well. Oh, uh, let's make sure no Kerbals sneak in. Okay. Hmm, that didn't like launching there. Okay, cheats. Teleport. Eve. Well, instead of having the semi-major axis, they have it like this, huh? Okay, so normally we got into an orbit with an apoapsis of about 7,000 kilometers. Okay, inclination. None of that matters unless we want... We'll have to check for daylight. Okay. So, teleport. Oh, that's a whole loading screen. It still has the launch clamps? Uh, usually, when we did that in KSP-1, the launch clamps... The launch clamps wouldn't stay with us. I'm advanced mode on. <laughs> oh, that's with the semi-major axis. Can I have uh, automatically remove the launch clamps like in KSP-1 option? Well, I guess this is another thing to test then. Testing that cheating actually works. Can we cheat? Well, I'm gonna release the launch clamps and then quickly teleport. <laughs> I don't know how that's gonna work, but hey. Okay, I've released the launch clamps. Don't bring them with me. Okay, we're here now. We're safe. Okay. Alright, so this is a good orbit. Uh, looks like we're close to the sur uh, close to the surface when we're in daylight. That's what we want. So we'll go up. We'll use the stage to bring our periapsis down and see how it works. Okay, just testing 60 kilometers this time and separation. Okay, hopefully that's all right. Okay, should I arm these? I guess they'll only go when they're... Uh-oh, they disappeared. Oh, they're up there now. Okay, but they say they're armed. Okay. They're up there, but they say they're armed. Uh, they are armed. Hopefully that's right. Okay. But hopefully they'll only deploy when it's safe. But when will it be safe? I don't know. We're definitely not getting to 200 meters per second, so... Or 247, whatever it said in the VAB. We're straying a little bit from retrograde. And it's maxed out the yaw. Uh, yeah, we can't go that low.
What about then we'll, we'll take off the drug shoot so they don't do anything useful. Um, what about getting more air brakes? Two tiers of air brakes, maybe? Staggered. Okay, now with more air brakes. I don't know if air brakes over here would do any good because it might not be in the airstream. I don't know if KSP2 is sophisticated enough for that. KSP1 often wasn't uh, without fair amount of space research, so it's tough to say. But there is a little gap here. If we put them over here, oh, they're light enough. Put them over here, it might get some air through that gap. I don't know if it'll count or not, but again, they're fairly light, so we can try it. Okay, let's try this version. Okay, 62 kilometers. And we're now going up. But we're intact, so improvement. So far, about five tons of ablation. I think we're going to end up at a much lower altitude. So, uh, well, however many air brakes these are, this is the right number. <laughs> Something like that. We're hanging out for quite a while down here, though. Lots of later boiling off. Or ripping off. Something like that. Okay, but now the sound is going. We'll probably end up with half of it left. So we better be safe after the next pass. We'll see. Then we go to dual heat shields, right? Or something like that. Air brakes worth their weight in gold. Obviously just another pass at 60 kilometers, because we can't adjust that right now. Hey, 67 kilometers. Well, I should just stick to sea level, really. And... Yeah, coming in with a little bit less than half, so that's sort of troublesome. We better slow down. Well, we've still got some ablator, and we are approaching periapsis. Three tons left. But we have not seen altitudes and speeds like this before, so... Marginally more successful. So far, no overheating or tilting away. Okay, but this isn't good enough. I'm gonna try the original idea of aiming for a lower periapsis. We aim for 60 here, but I had wanted to go to 50. Fifty-seven kilometers. There's some blinking of a uh, heat indicator. Don't know what that's on. An engine? Sporadic blinking. It's like the sort of uh, heat indicator blinking that happens if we're in time warp. Oh, now a more persistent one over here. Ah, uh, we're leaning, but it's much lower than before. So, if we added more air brakes, we'd survive longer, but we're gonna explode. Um, but... That was getting us pretty low. So, let's just revert to launch, and let's try 54.
k 67 kilometers. Fifty-seven kilometers. We're starting to get a little bit of that overheating indicator, but the thing that killed us was again turning away from the retrograde vector. But we are maxing out yaw again. Seems like this is still too low. Okay, well, I mean, improvement in a way, but still not quite good enough. What's the safe altitude? I really don't want to double up the heat shields, but again, maybe we will have to. Okay, trying 56.6. Sixty-two. Maxed out yaw. Huh. It seems to happen earlier. And we got overheating indicators. Oh, that overheating indicator is way off. We're not even t that tilted. That was the landing gear this time. We haven't had the landing gear go recently, but it went. Uh, it's amazing that it doesn't seem very different going to 50 than it does going to 56. Okay, I, I swear if I just restarted the game, it'd probably act differently or something, but I'm gonna try 58 and hope that we don't explode. Oh, fine. 59. <laughs> yeah, we tried 60 and it worked. So this is really picky of it. Okay, 59 it is. Sixty-six kilometers. Okay, well, this time no pinning of the yaw and no overheating indicator, so the dangerous altitude is somewhere between 56.6 and 58.6 for this current design. Right now we've used uh, six tons of later, almost now, get coming close to six. In terms of our apoapsis, that's going fairly well. And also, as far as the ablator is concerned, it's more or less doing what I expected in that, you know, coming in lower doesn't use that much more ablator, as you can see. It's using about half again. Okay, around we go. So, coming in, we have half our ablator. Yeah, pretty much exactly. We'll see. I think this should leave us suborbital. Don't know if we're gonna survive it though. But that'll be the first time that we ended up suborbital at Eve with this thing. So, we'll see. 64. It is pulling our periapsis down though. We could get into dangerous territory. Hopefully going into the dangerous territory while slower is not too bad. We'll see.
below 58. Still not maxing out the actuation as we approach periapsis here. That's the important part. Four point two tons of ablator left. Now we are going up now. And a heat warning on the landing gear. <laughs> Maybe we should barbecue roll a bit. Doesn't seem critical right now. This is getting critical though. 3,500 meters per second. Well, we're getting into an awful low orbit, but it's looking like we might not get fully suborbital. The ablation rate is going down, but probably not down enough. This is slow enough, I wonder if backing these up with inflatable shoot, uh, inflatable heat shields will do. And here we go. Okay. Well, that's fine. <laughs> that part's fine. Oh, this part's not. Yeah, so the next question is, should I back those up with inflatable heat shields, or should I back those up with the ablative heat shields? The inflatable ones are lighter. The core tank is gonna go. Alright. But, better, but yeah. I think the next step is just layering, doubling up the heat shields. And we'll see how that goes. Well, technically this part is still fine. <laughs> this is our final stage. Oh, what are those things coming back to haunt us? Let's not find out. Okay, so yeah. We'll just revert to VAB and I'll do further experiments next time. And they are experiments, so like, you know, please don't panic. And you know, uh, I'm, I'm not throwing everything at the problem all at once. We could obviously build an even bigger rocket with even more stuff. Uh, and we could propulsively slow down, right? We could just, instead of aero braking, we could propulsively slow down. But I want to see if we can avoid that because that takes a lot of fuel. And that fuel is going to cause the size of the rocket to expand quite a lot more. So we want to see what how little we can get away with. I've never tried to land and take off from EVE before, uh, even in KSV1, so I'm uh, taking a measured approach, but, you know, I think that we can try this out. Uh, the big question for me is whether, and maybe some of you guys can answer this, whether we need the return craft to be part of this, or whether it's okay to send the return craft separately, get it into EVE orbit and pick them up. Uh, so that's one thing. Uh, my reading of the contract, I feel like it's okay to do that, but maybe I'm incorrect about that. But this is just to get them back into EVE orbit after landing on the surface. This is not to bring them back. So uh, Maybe I've overdone it here as far as Delta V is concerned, uh, and we need to... Yeah, I mean, we'll end up with Delta V to bring them back, but I was using Trip Planner to estimate the Delta Vs, so you know, you know how that goes. So anyway, with all that said, I'll wrap it up here and thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.